Let's start with a quick intro of DCOS. Mesosphere Data Center Operating System can be deployed on any machine. It can be a bar metal server in your data center, it can be a virtual machine provided by VMware or OpenStack, or even a virtual machine in the cloud like an EC2 VM in AWS. It allows you to have the same experience anywhere. It includes Apache Mesos that aggregates all the resources, including the GPU. And on top of uh, Mesos, DCOS deploys many different services. And because all of these services are running on the same machines, it allows you to reduce the infrastructure cost. The life cycle of these services is fully automated by DCOS, providing a reduction of your management cost. And it allows you to focus on developing your applications or your models, which at the end provide you a faster time to market. We'll start with a demo where we will leverage Apache NiFi to get some pictures of cats and dogs from the Flickr API. We'll store these pictures in HDFS and we'll then leverage JupyterLab and TensorFlow to retrain an image classifier for these new categories. We'll then put in place um, CI-CD pipeline using GitLab and Jenkins. And this pipeline will allow us to build a new Docker image for an application that will help us classifying new pictures. This application will be deployed on Kubernetes and everything will be fully secured with Kerberos and TLS. First of all, let's uh, deploy a new DCOS cluster using Terraform. We can see that we have some GPU nodes, some standard agents, and one master. In production, you would deploy it with three masters for HA. We can see that we deploy it with uh, 1.11.6 and in uh, strict mode. We'll then uh, run a script that will deploy many services like uh, NiFi, Kubernetes, and so on. At the end of the script, we see that we have everything deployed. It normally takes 45 minutes to deploy everything. And we can see that everything is deployed with a uh, high availability. We see several ETCD nodes on Kubernetes. Uh, same on HDFS, we can see we have a, a name node, a secondary name node, and so on. So we'll start with uh, Apache NiFi and we we'll change the keyword we want to use. So here we want to look for cats. And we can see that it's using the Flickr API to get the list of pictures for this specific keyword. And that for each picture, it will just download it. Then the second step in the workflow is to write in HDFS. And here we can see that this is done with uh, Kerberos. So everything is uh, fully secured. Now that we have the workflow for downloading cats, the only thing we need to do is duplicate this workflow to download pictures about cat, about dogs, sorry. So just changing the keyword. And we can now start the workflow. Let's jump into Jupyter Lab. You see that we have included the uh, Baker X extensions to get uh, support for many different languages. You can see here that we have uh, already k init with our Kerberos principle. And we can directly uh, look into our uh, HDFS to see that we already have some pictures coming that have been written by Apache NiFi. And the goal is to have around 2,000 pictures. So we are pretty far for the moment.
So we have a, a directory, self model, where we can see we have the files that we need to build our application that we will deploy in Kubernetes. We can see that uh, in these different files, we have a Jenkins file that will be used by Jenkins to build our image and then to deploy that image in Kubernetes. And we also see we have a Docker file that uh, will build this image and that needs the model that we have not built yet. So let's create a GitLab repository with the same name and let's um, configure everything we need on the other side to enable the repository. Then uh, we can just uh, do a first commit without the model. And obviously when the model will be created, we'll add that model in the repository. And that uh, second commit will be the trigger for Jenkins to build the image and so on. We can see now that uh, we have our data in the GitLab repository, and we can see that we have the number of pictures we need. So let's just download this Python script that will retrain the classifier, and we can execute the script. But we change the image dir parameter to specify where our pictures are stored in HDFS. That will take a while to retrain it. So we'll move forward. And here, just want to show you that we have a Kubernetes cluster with no pods. We have a traffic ingress controller with no rules. And now we can go in Jenkins and we can build our pipeline. We just uh, specify that we want that to be executed every minute. This is this cron tab syntax. And we specify the GitLab repository. And we can also then select the right credentials that needs to be used with this repository. You can see it will look at the Jenkins file. Now that uh, we have our model available in slash TMP, like we can see here, we just need to copy this model to our self model directory. And we can just uh, add it to the GitLab repository. And when we will commit, then that will trigger quickly our Jenkins pipeline. We can see the new commit in GitLab. And now we go to Jenkins. And we can see that the task has started. The 
the way Jenkins works is that it needs an executor to run this task. And we see that uh, DCOS has launched this uh, executor, that everything is in progress. We can even take a look at the console output and follow the progress of this job. And when this job is finished, then we can just uh, go and take a look at uh, the Kubernetes dashboards to see that uh, the corresponding pods are being launched. And then we can see that uh, we have new rules in traffic to expose our application. Finally, when everything is ready, we can just go to the corresponding URL to access our application and we can upload a picture to see if uh, our model works well. So we'll start with uh, a picture of a cat and we'll see that uh, it will classify it uh, pretty well. It always works better with cats and dogs. Don't know why. And uh, let's try with the dog now. We'll see it will probably quite recognize it well, but not as well as cats. And finally, we can just have a little bit of fun and try to challenge our model a little bit with a, a picture that can be a little bit uh, confusing for that model, which is like a, a cat and a dog together. It's more a cat for it. So that's it for the first demo. In the second demo, we classify spams and hands. So we'll start by using a file that contains both spans and hands and use Spark to create a model and then store this model in uh, HDFS. Then I will again use Spark, but in this case, we'll use it to produce new messages in Kafka. And these new messages will be based on the vocabulary of the spans and hands that we have in the original file. And finally, we'll use this model to classify the messages we get from Kafka. And in this last step, we'll use the JupyterLab to provide a notebook experience. We start a script that will uh, create our model. And this script is just executing the DCOS Spark run command like you can see here and we specify the jar file and if we look at the spark package on dcos we can see that a driver has been started and that driver has then started an executor and if we go through the spark ui we can see that our job is in progress Okay, now my job is finished. So now the job is finished and we can launch a second script to generate messages again using DCOS Spark Run and specifying our jar file and some other options. Our job is now running. And we can see that uh, there is a driver, an executor on Mesos. And for classifying the messages, we'll follow a different approach. We will use JupyterLab and we will directly execute our code. And in that case, JupyterLab itself is the Spark driver. And it's uh, very nice to use this notebook experience because then you can modify your code easily and just click play again to try what you modified. And you can see here, it's again fully secured with SASL, SSL, security protocol to consume the messages from Kafka, which is the highest security level you can get. Here we can see that uh, we are using five executors that have been launched by the Spark driver, which again is the JupyterLab notebook itself. And one of the advantages of this approach is that we have created a quota, like you see, 
the Jupyter Lab notebook can have seven CPU and a certain amount of RAM. So that allows you to limit how much resources can be used by the person that is using this uh, notebook. And uh, we should also be able to see the output here. We see that uh, the messages are being classified and we can see the accuracy. But even if I stop my job here, I still consume my resources on Mesos because I want to be able to click play again and get results very quickly. So uh, here, you need to make sure you shut down the kernel. And when you shut down the kernel on Jupyter Lab, then you free the resources. So that's also why it's very nice to get uh, these quotas on Mesos because the data scientist will have to stop his job before he can start new jobs. Finally, for our last demo, we will use a framework called TensorFlow on Spark that has been open sourced by Yahoo. We'll use the MNIC dataset and we'll train a model. And in this case, we will also use GPUs. We clone the TensorFlow on Spark repository and we download the MNIST dataset. Then we execute a standard Spark job to copy all these datasets in HDFS with the right uh, IROC. We can see that in this Spark submit command, we have indicated a Spark opts environment variable. This is a kind of magic variable that we create when we deploy the Jupyter Lab notebook to hide all the complexity, uh, to specify uh, all the Java libraries and all the things related to the Kerberos integration and so on. Now we can finally start the last job where we will run this TensorFlow on Spark and we'll leverage GPU. And as you can see here that we have two GPU in use. So what have we demonstrated with these demos? First of all, Mesosphere DCOS provides all the software you need to create a secure ML pipeline. It can deploy each of them in a few minutes. It can secure all the communication with Kerberos and TLS. You get the same experience wherever you deploy DCOS on-premise or in the public cloud. It provides a nice notebook experience for data scientists. It can leverage GPUs. Mesos quotas can be leveraged to guarantee resources and to make sure each data scientist stops its job when it doesn't need the resources anymore. And finally, you can use Kubernetes and GitLab and Jenkins uh, to build a CI CD pipeline and deploy your web application that will leverage the models. Thank you.